Hey guys, it's Jason with Crane Creek Kennels again. Hey, I just wanted to uh, jump on here real quick. Uh, this is a new video. This will be part one. There will be two parts to this. Uh, but this is part one of the story or the start of the story of Bigger Staff's Little Buck that Junior Laster owned and sold to uh, Claire Chinawa. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed uh, shooting and recording it. Uh, there'll be more to come after these two, um, but these are uh, just the start of it. So uh, anyway, if you're not already, please, please subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this and not subscribe, we really would appreciate it. And uh, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Our three sponsors, NightlifeKennel.com, Rusty Cotton Design Company, and SunspotLights.com. Please go check them out and support them. You sold him, but you got to keep him, right? I sold, no. Let me tell you what happened. That newspaper article's a little misleading, but, uh, and they didn't mean it to be. I, Bigger Stuff's Little Buff was raised right over here at Bearville, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Bert Smith raised him. He was out of old flying hawk. And uh, he was Junior Bigger Staff's. Dad told Junior, Bert, we bred for Bert's female for a pup. Well, Dad and Junior at that time was partners on Wolf Hall. They went down and bought him together. Later, Joanne and I bought bigger staff out. But we went up there to look at them pups, and, and Dad uh, said, Junior, you just go ahead and pick you one out. You know, he knew Junior would hunt it and give it a chance. And uh, he said, you get ready to get rid of it while we might talk about it later. But anyhow, and his bird's boy was uh, and Junior looked at him, and he reached down and picked old Buck up. And that boy bird said, yep, that's what I thought. But I told Dad about two weeks ago that that pup right there would be a world champion someday. Nobody's done anything about it. So Junior, they was a fella, W.D. Harmon from Texas, would come up into Green Forest to the show and stuff and hunt. And he come up and hunted, and we took him over and he hunted with the bigger staff and old buck. And he just fell in love with him, everybody. And he said, uh, bigger staff said, what would you take for buck? Well, Junior, of course, he just milking cows and his wife worked at Tyson's, you know, and, and he just, you know, they had what they needed, but it wasn't access this mm -hmm. like and we sure didn't because a Pentecostal preacher's boy family at a little country church don't have no access mm -hmm. when you're on mom and dad's on three wheel tithe and offering for 57 years you know they never was on a salary or nothing but but he uh and he priced it to WD and WD just bought it well about two years later W.D. called me one day and he said, Junior, I'm going to have a sale book. I said, what? I said, what are you selling me for? Well, I'd rather sell him to somebody that will get some good out of him as to have to split. And I said, well, what do you want for me? He told me. And I said, well, I ain't got no money. But we got a little bit inside. And I said, uh, let me just tell you how it is. I don't know. But I said, can I have a couple of days? You got to get this. and very little otherwise. Mm -hmm. And we talk about it, and she said, well, whatever you think. So I go down to the bank at Hollister, Virginia Kenyon, a friend of ours, and Joanne, when she was young and at home, she had babysat it, Virginia's kids, you know, all the schools just right there. 
and they just lived about five or six blocks from Joanne and my mom did from school. And uh, Virginia's, I went in there and I said, Virginia, I need to borrow some money. How much? Well, I need to borrow $1,250. I mean, uh, uh, she, I said, how much have I got? She went back and said, you got $1,250. And I said, I need to borrow 1000 to go with it. She said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to buy a car. And she just shook her head. She said, you got to be the <laughs> dumbest feller I ever seen. Your wife is pregnant. You ain't got no insurance, and you're borrowing money to buy a country. I said, it'd be all right, Virginia. She said, I guess you sold that bill of goods to Joe Hinton, too, didn't you? And I said, well, I tried to. <laughs> so anyhow, I come home and told WD. I, I called him, and I said, Harmon, I'm going to buy you a dog, but there's a, there's a catch to it. He said, what's the catch? And I said, you're going to have to bring him to me because I ain't got the money to come and get him. And he said, well. And I said, I'm just telling you, I ain't got the money to come get him. So anyhow, he, uh, he brought him to me on a Tuesday. He had a he was a grand show champion. I took him to Western Grove, Arkansas, 102 nights. Took him to Western Grove, Arkansas to a coon hunt. Back when, back when coon hunts was coon hunts. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're talking 50 plus dogs in the open register. And uh, won first place with him. He had a second. He had a second. Uh, that somebody down there had put on him for WD. And uh, I won first place with him on Friday night. Gainesville, Missouri had a hunt Saturday night. So I took him to Gainesville, Missouri Saturday night and won first place with him over there. Made him a night champion within the week that I bought him. Well, that kind of eased things a little bit, you know. And that was in August. In October, they had the ACHA World Hunt in Southern Illinois. I took him over there and won the ACHA World Show. I won the King of the World at Green Fork, UKC World Show, you know, and all that stuff. And made him a Grand Night Champion in six night champions. He was a dual UKC, NKC, and ACHA dual Grand when I... And I went to maybe Richmond, Indiana. No, it wasn't Richmond. It was Princeton, Indiana, I think. Anyhow, somewhere up in Indiana to Walker Day. And, uh, of course, he was a Grand Night Champion when I went up there. That was in April. And uh, I drew out with a fellow from West Virginia by the name of Claire Chenoweth. I didn't know who Claire Jennings was. You know, he's in West Virginia, not smart. Mm -hmm. And he had bought a dog. All we heard going to the woods was he had bought this dog out of Thunder River Joe and give twelve thousand dollars for it. We treat four coons, and of course it was a hundred and a hundred. We treat four coons. I had, looks good, sis. I had four first strikes and four first trees. No, that's not right. I had, I had three first strikes and four first trees. And up there, these coons. Mm -hmm. And the, and when we got to that last tree, we thought was the last tree. Uh. Claire's dog wasn't there. The other two dogs was already out of the hunt. They'd already just withdrew then. Going into that tree, probably four or five hundred yards before we got there, looking back in the timber off to her left, we seen a coon setting up way back in this timber. And didn't think anything. By the time we got in there, Claire's dog was off of the tree and got minus. He come back in there and uh, we seen the coon. And the 
guy judging the cast, he said, and Claire said, I'm just withdrawing mine. Well, that just left Buck. And he said, uh, well, Junior said, uh, what do you want to do, Judge? He said, you think you've got enough to win? And I said, I don't know. This is Indiana. You never know. Back then, three-hour hunts. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you could rack them up. <clears throat> and he said, I said, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, you remember where we seen that coon sitting up back up yonder? Well, he said, yeah, but what do you mean? And I said, I don't want to, I'm not going to walk him in there. I'd just like to walk up towards that timber and just send him that direction. Well, Junior, he said, he can't read that coon. said, you just want to leave him truck. He said, that thing probably been setting up there since dark. Well, since it got dark. I said, well, if you don't care, I'd like to do that. We sent him in there. And when five minutes got there, he was counting it down every 30 seconds. He got the one, you got one minute, and he just started to open his mouth to say, You got 30 seconds. Oh, oh, oh. I said, Strike and tree buck. Ow, 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 ow. Them guys stayed out there in the field, and we walked in there, and he had found that cone laying up that tree and treated that thing. <laughs> And that was pretty impressive even to me, you know, and I'd seen him do some amazing things. But we got back into the fire ground, and a guy from Iowa, Ivan Kaltenberg, was there, and he'd read a feed mail uh, to, you know, he knew, and he'd read a feed mail and all this and that. We are sitting there talking about pups and hunting, you know, and I knew two or three of them guys. And he said, uh, about that time, Claire walked over to me. He said, uh, what would it take to buy old Buck tonight? And I just turned around and looked at him and I said, $20,000. Turned right back around and picked my coffee cup up. Who? He said, that's a bunch, but I'll give 15 I said, uh, okay, but I don't think so. He said, you won't sell him for $15,000? I said, no, I don't think so. He said, uh, that's kind of surprising. And I said, well, he said, on what are you basing your price? And I shouldn't have said it, and I still kind of wish I hadn't, but, I mean, we got to be, Claire and I got to be real close, real, real close. He said, fact is, he would come on, after I started selling cars, he owned a Lincoln Mercury Continental dealership, mm -hmm. Chevrolet dealership, Ford dealership in West Virginia, and he'd drive all the way back, him and his wife and friends of theirs, just to visit with me at the dealership where I was working. He begged me to come out there and manage one of his dealerships, and I wouldn't do it. But anyhow... I said, I'm just telling you now what I'm basing my price. You told us that you give $12,000 for the dog you was hunting. Uh, would you look at my score and look at his score and see what you think the price difference might be? Uh -huh. He just turned off. off. <laughs> and I didn't know who he was mad at. And it kind of got the working on me <clears throat> and so Dwayne Clark was president of the Walker Association and of course he lived up your crane me and Dwayne and with this family you know you might say and Dwayne I went over to Dwayne I said Dwayne I said, what? I said you know a guy by the name of Clara Chenoweth yeah. I said Man, he just offered me fifteen thousand dollars for old Buck. He said so. I'm thinking, I thought you was a friend. You're supposed to tell me something. <laughs> he said, Well, I'll just tell you like it is. The looks of this scorecard, and right now you've probably got maybe the best, but one of the best tree and walker dogs in the tree and walker breeders and fancier association. You own it. If you sell him to Claire, he owns it. 
just to make up your mind. So I brought him home with me. I went to the phone. I had a pay phone. Of course, cell phones wasn't even my thought. Right. Went outside to a pay phone and called mom, called Joanne and the kids were staying down at mom and dad's at the church. Called down there at about four o'clock in the morning, clean. Mom picked the phone up. And mom, uh, I like to talk to Joanne. What's the matter, son? What's the matter? I said, ain't nothing matter. I just, you know, everything's fine. I'm okay. I just want to talk to Joanne. I heard her. She went downstairs and she said, Joe, Joe was on the phone. Didn't have the phone downstairs even then. She had to come all the way up in steps. I could hear her coming up in steps. She got up there and she said, What's the matter? You okay? I said, Honey, I'm okay. I drew out with a guy from West Virginia, Buck put on a real good show, and he's offered me $15,000 for him, and I'd like to know what you want, think I ought to do. 